of animals like the giant squid have dominated recent news and reputable names like Jane Goodall are recognizing the possibility of new primate species we have yet to discover as the evidence mounts and the experts come forward it's difficult to dismiss these stories as fictitious rumors Yeti Sasquatch Bigfoot it's known by many names but the stories of its existence are strikingly similar. A giant, human-like creature that lives in remote areas and avoids contact with the outside world. For some, it is a tall tale passed through the generations, but to Native Americans, Bigfoot is no fantasy. All these people had seen him who had a, an accidental run-in with him all got affected the same. They went into shock. Members of the Lumi tribe believe Bigfoot is a real being. Encounters have been retold throughout their history. Our old people, like my grandmother, tell us stories about Siatko, Samaquist. You people call him Sasquatch. They tell us if we run across him, not to look into his eyes because he can steal your spirit. These are the legends the old people talk about. Modern Western culture jokes at Bigfoot, but in the Indian culture, Bigfoot is serious. This is a real being, a real creature with spiritual powers that lives in wild places. It's a guardian of sacred places, and it's not a joke at all. I went duck hunting in the evening about 6.15, 6.30, and um, I looked up, and this thing got out of the ditch, and I froze, and I got my knees started shaking, and that was Bigfoot. After that, I, I sold my guns, and I never did go hunting again, you know? It was at this time that the former police chief received a flood of Bigfoot calls. I answered so many calls on him that people were making fun, saying that we were seeing things, that we were smoking dope, that we were drinking or something. There was no such thing. And the more they taunted about it, the more I wanted to prove there was such a thing without killing him. I did not want to kill this animal. I wanted to prove that he existed. One night, he came face to face with the monster. Would he finally get his proof? I received a, a prowler call at Emma Smith's residence on Scott Road. I was going north on Chief Martin Road, which is just off on the Scott Road. I could hear this screaming. I could see this thing running right toward my car. As it came into my bright light, I could see it was a Sasquatch. He had his mouth wide open, showing me all of his teeth. He was coming at me in an aggressive manner. At this point, his police radio picked up a loud, piercing noise. It's a very high-pitched, squealing, blood-curdling, make your hair stand on edge scream. Police headquarters was able to record what is said to be the call of a Sasquatch. <laughs> Who or what is responsible for this intense shriek? The evidence was taken to a mammal expert to be analyzed. I've heard it and it's like nothing I've ever heard before. It's a noise, but whether or not an actual creature made that noise, that's, I can't determine that. It doesn't sound like anything that I am familiar with, and I certainly am familiar with almost all the mammals that are in North America and their calls. Could this rare tape be proof that Bigfoot exists? This Looney tribe elder has all the evidence he needs. He's stared Bigfoot in the eye. He looks so human. Their facial features are, are so much like our own. It's almost like you say, where did you come from? What are you? I want to talk to you. I want to communicate. There's not a doubt in my mind that Sasquatch exists. Recently, more evidence has begun to surface. 
An increasing number of photographs and footprints have led hundreds of people to conduct their own search for Sasquatch. In the Pacific Northwest, Peter Byrne heads the Bigfoot Research Project. He and his team have dedicated themselves to finding the elusive beast. One of the questions that arises is, um, when is one going to be found? There's no answer to that. Today, a week from now, 10 years from now, nobody knows. There are no guarantees. The miles of dense forest make it difficult to spot the ape-like creature. It's not easy. It's a very tough task to find one of these things. We're dealing with something which is uh, shy and elusive, very wary of man, which has an enormous area to live in and to hide in, and um, it's not going to be found easily. Byrne is given leads every day, and he's studied hundreds of pictures. After years on the job, he easily picks out the fakes. This is a fake footprint. It's very square. You can see the line of the toes across the top here, simply straight, which is wrong. They should be angled. And then the sides are dead straight. And it's recognizable as a fake footprint, probably made with a, a wooden mold of some kind. But occasionally, Peter is witness to something he can't explain. After getting a call, Burn spots movement on a mountain in the distance. They're clearly visible, and they definitely are primates of some kind. They are walking upright and they're moving fairly fast. In the time we've been here, they've moved about 200 yards, maybe 250 yards. There is no way to tell what Byrne is actually seeing on the mountain. But recently, he received a tape where the evidence may be clearer. It's from Northern California, and uh, it's from uh, late last year. And the, the photographers say that in here, in the, in the center of the picture there, just there. The dark area? The dark area. You can see something, and you can see something moving. Scott Harriet and Daryl Owen captured these incredible images. Something seems to be lurking beyond the thick trees. I can see him pointing at something. After about 29 seconds, he then lowered the camera, looked at me, and started crying. I mean, he literally had a little minor break, started crying, and said, let's get out of here. I was very scared at that point as well. We went down the hill. I'm crying at this moment, so excuse my voice. It's right here. You can see it. Okay. Computer analysis allows us to get a closer look at the tape. Right here would be the head and the arm down this way. And let me rock back and forth here. And as you can see, that it is, it's something right there is moving while everything else in the picture stays static. Something is in this picture. But after viewing so many hoaxes, Peter Byrne remains skeptical. But he is confident he will find evidence that Bigfoot exists. The way we're going with our project, which is a very sophisticated project, I think we're the people who are going to find one, almost certainly. Coming up, more monsters on land and in the sea. An eerie creature lives in a lake high in the Andes of Argentina. I saw it, and it's a very big animal. A sea serpent in the waters of Lake Champlain, caught on tape. We took the camcorder out, and then, in fact, champ or several champs were back again and all of a sudden up out of this water came this big black thing i mean it was huge black and shiny he swings his neck around and lifts his tail up and lifts his neck and head out of the water entirely something is lurking in the forests of northern california more human-like than anything uh, than any animal that's the scariest i've probably been in my life that thing was big big and the remarkable film that may be proof of the existence of bigfoot when we came upon the creature, it, it immediately turned around and started to walk away. I'm satisfied that there is no possibility that could be a man in a pursuit. Finally, amazing footage of what could be a new species. That and the ultimate rundown in our Unex report. Coming up on Unexplained Mysteries. Photographs, eyewitness accounts, films, and video. The evidence is growing. Many unknown creatures stalk the planet. The largest and most terrifying are being spotted in large bodies of water. These are sea monsters. My friend shouted because uh, an animal appeared suddenly in the lake. 
the animal was uh, so big and it had several humps, I felt a little afraid because we were near the animal. Lake Nahuawalbi, high in the Andes Mountains. This is home to Argentina's own prehistoric lake monster, Nahuelito. Some people think that Nahuelito seems like a dinosaur because of the size of the animal, with humps, like a whale. It was big. It was very big. Different phenomena have been seen, some of which can be explained. But there is testimony by others of having seen a neck and a head, and that is more difficult. There are similarities in features between Nahuelito and those of the aquatic dinosaur, Plesiosaurus. The Plesiosaurus was a rather big animal, maybe 5 to 10 meter long, that live in the um, shallow seawaters, not far from the coast. The problem is that the Plesiosaur became extinct some 65 million years ago. Then it's impossible to find Plesiosaurs at present. Could Nahuelito be a new undiscovered species? Eyewitness accounts dating back to the 1920s would suggest otherwise. <laughs> There was always talk about marine monsters, things which rose from the water. They were attracted to these lakes due to the mystery of the things which one speaks about here. And the sightings continue to this day. The lake was like a mirror, and we saw a mark that was forming, and what called our attention to it was that there were no vessels causing it. One cannot ignore the voice of the locals. There are fishermen who have seen it. I don't know whether it is a plesiosaur or whatever you may call it, but there must be something. Some people believe me, but there are a lot of persons who, who, who told me that I was inventing stories. But no, I saw it, and it's a very big animal. So what exactly is this, and where does it come from? The truth is that nature is indeed very strange, and very different things may be observed everywhere. Sightings of other sea monsters are on the rise. These experiences are changing people's lives. I started as a disbeliever. I went right on past being a believer into a knower. Lake Champlain. This tranquil setting does little to warn the unsuspecting of the sea serpent that lives just below its surface. Probably 99% of the people have seen it, but they won't talk about it because you do get some ridicule. This creature is Champ. A rash of shocking photos and eyewitness accounts have forced the monster out into the open. We're out on the boat, just taking an evening sail, and we began to see some very strange things going on. You could see underneath the water, it was a huge black mat, it was just monster. You could see it had a definite body, shape to a body. And then you could see it definitely had a neck and a head. And then all of a sudden, up out of this water came this big black thing. I mean, it was huge, black and shiny. Up came the neck and the head, literally like my hand is doing. It turned and it looked at me and it turned and it went right back down into the water. We took the camcorder out and then, in fact, Champ or several Champs were back again. I started screaming in fear. I found myself climbing on the canvas top of my bow, which I know doesn't hold me. That's how, how scared I was. You can see one of its humps sticking up out of the water. There's two, two in the middle is four, one to the left out front is five in a row. And now, what we spot out there is some fins or flippers, and you can see them flipping back and forth on the water. You see a creature with a long neck floating across the water. It starts thrashing in the water. He swings his neck around and lifts his tail up, he swings his entire body around and lifts his neck and head out of the water entirely. It was moving uh, deliberately, and all of a sudden I saw it like bend over, snake-like and dive into the water.
champ has become the subject of a scientific controversy. Few people agree on exactly what champ is. A lot of people believe that there's one wretched creature that's been in the lake for a millennia, and uh, that's really absurd. The most popular theory is that champ, like Nahualito, is a plesiosaur. There's no geological evidence that the plesiosaurs or anything like that survived beyond the Cretaceous extinction 60 million years ago. On the other hand, the coelacanth was only discovered in, in, the, in the late 1930s, that fish, and that had been extinct also for over 60 million years. But if Champ is a dinosaur, how could it have survived extinction when so many other creatures from that time could not? Crocodiles survive, and they can get up to 20 feet or more. If they're deep glacial lakes, that were at one time arms of the sea. So one could say there were marine animals living in these open lakes, and as the land rose, they could have been sort of isolated. There may be all kinds of things there that we don't know about. Uh, the thing about it is I think you have to keep an open mind and, and uh, see what, what else comes up. Whatever its origin, it is more than just local lore to the many people who have seen it. We are already convinced that they are real. There are some very big specimens uh, seen in the lake. Next on Unexplained Mysteries, the most controversial piece of evidence in the Bigfoot debate. This creature was standing beside the creek. The scariest I've probably been in my life. But experts question its authenticity. Real Bigfoot specimens would move as a gorilla with their entire torso, and their head would move similarly. Then, the Loch Ness Monster exposed. It was a large, dark hump, possibly about 8 to 10 feet long. It looked black against the water, you know. And the ongoing debate about the evidence. There have been widely publicized uh, allegations that the object in the photograph is a modified toy submarine. Exclusive footage of a mountain creature found. The fact that we can demonstrate the large size and proportions greatly diminishes the likelihood of a hoax. Then, we'll put it all together for you in our Onyx Report on Unexplained Mysteries. Hear extraordinary stories of people saved by angels. A mysterious hand pulls a man out of a burning plane. It was translucent, whitish, goldish. And what really saved an entire school from a suicide bomber? She told me, Mommy, the angel saved us. On the next Unexplained Mysteries, the signs are everywhere. Unexplained Mysteries, The Monster Show. Since the first reported sightings of Bigfoot, thousands of eyewitnesses have come forward. What I saw was a, about a six and a half, seven foot creature, Bigfoot. Biggest thing is size and its movement, more human-like than anything, uh, than any animal. I didn't really get a good look at him. He was running so fast. There was no human could run that fast. Some have gotten closer than they ever expected got out of the car and dog started raising hell and just barking and sniffing and carrying on so i just looked around i thought well you know maybe there's something here looked up here and uh saw three big hoods standing there researchers continually discover clues that prevent the search from coming to an end places where things have been broken off as you can see through here not only that below it there is a path here is a, a, a branch which has been knocked off and walked over many times. Broken branches here, pushed down branches there. Something has obviously come through here regularly. Experts have collected evidence from around the world. It's a 14 and a half inch track. It shows what we call dermal ridges, the little fingerprint type ridges. And these have been studied by police fingerprint experts and no one's found any flaw in any of them. But one encounter is the catalyst of the Bigfoot phenomenon. Its appearance was just a, a large, large humanoid creature walking like a human being. 1967, Roger Patterson and Bob Gimlin were horseback riding through the forests of Bluff Creek, California. Patterson was carrying a 16-millimeter camera in his saddlebag. 
we came around a, a bend, a, a bend in the creek where there was a downfall tree. At that point, uh, as we came around the bend in the creek there, this creature was standing beside the creek. This being was unlike anything they had ever seen before. Had Patterson and Gimlin stumbled upon an unknown primate? When we came upon the creature, it was standing still by the creek. It immediately turned around and started to walk away. Patterson was thrown off of his startled horse, but was able to get on his feet and grab his camera. Roger Patterson turned on his movie camera, ran after it as far as he could, and finally uh, he stopped and it uh, walked away. What followed was 58 seconds of a strange being covered in hair walking into the forest. This film would become the most compelling evidence and create a worldwide controversy. Many claim Patterson and Gimlin were just part of a well-orchestrated scam, but Bob Gimlin is sticking to his story. There is no way uh, that this could ever be falsified or any man could be in a suit because of the movement of the muscle underneath the hair. I've uh, gone through the whole film and reconstructed everything, the exact body movements uh, and everything you can. And I'm satisfied that there is no possibility that could be a man in a fur suit. There's just no way around it. Experts claim that the proof is positively clear and that the movement of the monster reveals the truth about Bigfoot. The most compelling evidence in the tape is as simple as a head turn. Uh, in hoaxes, you see an animal uh, that may be someone in a suit move with their head and their neck. And real Bigfoot specimens would move as a gorilla with their entire torso and their head would move similarly. The typical ape posture has the shoulders carried very high and the mouth and the jaw is lower than the shoulder. So if an ape wants to turn its head, its sh jaw runs into its shoulder. The creature that Patterson watched turned its head, and then the shoulder went with it, in what you, uh, just as what you would expect with an ape. The Patterson film has become a reference for hundreds of supposed Bigfoot sightings. Most recently, a tape from the forests of Washington State. Could this be yet another Sasquatch captured on tape? The images make a strong case for its validity. The Patterson footage, you can see that the animal's walking straight forward, but then when he turns to see the cameraman, his entire body, his torso and all, moves up and to the right. Here are the most recent uh, Washington footage. You've got the animal crouched in a clearing here, and then as it starts to look towards the camera person, its entire torso comes up and to the left. Its whole body, not just the neck, but up and to the left. Very similar to the Patterson footage. There are many theories on the Patterson film. Some say that Hollywood special effects artists were responsible for the prank. But to this day, no hard evidence has been found to challenge the film's authenticity. And with eyewitness accounts increasing, it's hard to brush it aside as a hoax. That's the scariest I've probably been in my life to be that close to something and not see it. And feel it. And, and the way it was breathing, I figured that thing was big, big. It had to be big, but there was no, there was no other answer. Next on Unexplained Mysteries, the Loch Ness Monster lives. Eyewitnesses recount terrifying encounters with the elusive beast. It was black. Um, you could see the water running off its back as it came out. It's big. That's moving. That's alive. And it came straight toward me, very fast. Science weighs in on the mystery. Sonar was one area in which it seemed that it could get reproducible, unusual results. Two targets came up on the screen. The second target was quite large. And a new piece of evidence may change the minds of disbelievers. What a lot of people don't realize is that the familiar messy image is only cropped Close up. Also, the exclusive tape of a snow-walking ape-like creature. It's a large primate that has no business being there, and that's what makes it very interesting. Finally, we'll reopen the case files in our Unex report, here on Unexplained Mysteries. Unexplained Mysteries, The Monster Show. I'm convinced there's something. What is it? I don't know, but there's something definite in love. Loch Ness. This lake in the Scottish Highlands is one mile wide, 23 miles long, 
and over 900 feet deep. But what lurks in its depths is what makes this lake famous. Suddenly I saw this colossal great hump about 60 or 70 feet long. It looked black against the water, you know, and it was going fast against the wind. All I can say is that I saw a very large creature, living creature, for sure. That's big, <laughs> that's moving, that's alive. These terrifying reports are nothing new. Nessie is legendary among lake monsters. But is it real? Nessie's story began in 1934 with a single piece of evidence. On the morning of April the 19th, 1934, uh, Lieutenant Colonel R. Kenneth Wilson, who was uh, also a practicing physician, claimed to have stopped his car uh, along one of the shores of this immense lake, Loch Ness, and seen a disturbance in the water, made some exposures of plates, and one of the results was, of course, the most famous of all Nessie images. The photograph, which came to be known as the surgeon's photograph, cemented the image of the Loch Ness Monster in the public's mind. People have pinned their faith on that photograph. They believe in Nessie because of that photograph, which is a very dangerous thing to do. Recently, there have been widely publicized uh, allegations that uh, Colonel Wilson was actually part of a conspiracy and that the object in the photograph is a modified toy submarine, which has a, a plastic wood neck on it. And these sensational uh, claims were made by a man by the name of Christian Sperling. Could the world's most famous photograph of the Loch Ness Monster be a fake? Richard Smith thinks he has evidence that could prove the photo is real. The major claim is made that this alleged toy submarine with the neck on it was floated in a small bay. What a lot of people don't realize is that the familiar Nessie image is only a cropped close-up taken from the original picture. The original picture clearly shows a wide central expanse of this immense lake with the opposite shoreline clearly visible. It's not a small bed. A second rarely seen photograph shot by the surgeon reveals something else. It's very important because the head and neck in this picture are now rather straightened out and this shows that this object, whatever it is, is not made of unbending plastic wood. Some researchers are now rethinking their image of Nessie. They are concentrating on the consistencies among eyewitness accounts. There's no head and neck showing then. There was just this great hump. And then this huge hump came out of the water. It was a large, dark hump, possibly about 8 to 10 feet long. The surgeon's photograph got rid of a lot of, of dead wood, it got rid of a wild card. There's never been a sighting like that since and before for that matter the head and the neck doesn't exist so now we can concentrate on what we feel are the right sightings the hump back this is what's come forward so many times technologies like radar and sonar may help to unlock the mysteries within the lake the classic photographs have already been dismissed the underwater pictures were controversial Sonar was the one area in which it seemed that you could get reproducible, unusual results. Now, with the help of submarines, there is promising new data. Two targets came up on the screen. One, obviously the submarine, hard target, a depth of about 450 feet. The second target was quite large. We were doing nothing that we didn't normally do. So obviously something was out there. The most compelling evidence so far comes from the people who have been face to face with the mythic beast. There was a large body, clearly, in the, in the middle of these flippers. There was a kind of a sort of vortex effect following it. It was like a whale. It was black. Um, you could see the water running off its back as it came out. It was a large, dark hump, possibly about 8 to 10 feet long, about 4 feet out of water. It was dark in colour, and uh, there was no head or neck. Then proceeded to about, within about 250 yards from the shore, thereupon it just sank completely out of sight. And basically I was shocked, rigid, totally shocked. 
All I can say is that I saw a very large creature, living creature, for sure. Uh, certainly not a boat wake, certainly not a log, certainly not an otter, certainly not birds or anything else that I've ever seen here. All the testimony and research leads to one question. What exactly is the Loch Ness Monster? Everybody has theories. I think if everybody who's ever put forward a theory on the identity of the Loch Ness Monster actually had put in a thousand hours watching, there wouldn't be a mystery. The Loch Ness Monster lives in people's minds and cannot be dislodged from there. It doesn't matter how many photographs it is proved, it doesn't matter what the scientific implications are. The Loch Ness Monster is something which does exist and will always exist because people want it to exist. Coming up on Unexplained Mysteries, are these images of a Himalayan Yeti? Although it appears to have great bulk, it appears to be very natural. The experts give it a thorough analysis. We're talking here about a, an individual that is somewhere between 8 and 10 feet high. I can tell that it's a primate. It's a large primate that has no business being there. And we'll examine all the possibilities. The explanation has been offered that sightings of the Yeti are, in fact, sightings of monks. Stay tuned for our Unex report. We'll be examining the evidence and get to the truth about monsters next on Unexplained Mysteries. Unexplained Mysteries, The Monster Show. The fascination with these strange, elusive primates is as popular as ever. Recent news articles continue to examine the ongoing controversy. Throughout his life, a Northern California road builder made important claims about the transitory beast. On his deathbed in late 2002, however, he revealed that it was all an elaborate hoax. But many scientists disagree. How do we account for all of the other eyewitness testimony? and growing evidence. Now, new exclusive videotape of what could be the Himalayan Yeti may put an end to the controversy. Coming down a mountain, two hikers get a startling glimpse of what appears to be a large, hairy creature trudging through the thick snow. The next angle shows the most compelling images on the tape. The snow walker appears to be climbing up the icy mountain. Who or what did the hikers capture on camera? Jeff Meldrum, a primate anatomy expert from Idaho State University, analyzed the tape. One of the things that I'm immediately impressed by is just the massiveness of it. But yet, although it appears to have great bulk, it appears to be very natural. It doesn't appear to be uh, uh, like a padded costume. With careful examination, Meldrum is able to determine details about the creature. The only reference for scale that we have in this image is the, the trackway left by the mountaineers using a conservative estimate, say, of 16 inches width on that trail. We can then estimate the limb proportions and dimensions of the creature on this video. Based on that, we're talking here about a, an individual that is somewhere between 8 and 10 feet in high. The fact that we can demonstrate the large size and proportions greatly diminishes the likelihood of a hoax because it makes it that much more difficult to contrive a costume. Cryptozoologist Richard Greenwell is constantly searching for new, unknown species. He examined the tape thoroughly. I can tell that it's a primate. It's a large primate that has no business being there. But it is there. And that's what makes it very interesting and potentially a great scientific uh, discovery. The controversy continues. Could the answer be much simpler? There's some accounts of a practice among Tibetan monks, which is the ability to generate and project great heat from within the body. And this would allow someone, an, an adept of this practice, to survive, obviously, in the, in the wintry cold of the Himalayas. But Meldrum has a different theory. The term abominable snowman is, is a real misnomer because if this creature exists, it doesn't inhabit the snow fields of the, the high elevations, but instead would occupy the temperate valleys in between the mountain ranges. And its tracks are simply seen as it goes from valley to valley. And further investigation shows that the animal may be exhibiting signs of intelligence. The scene where the creature seems to be just sort of sitting there, in fact, it, it, at first glance, it looks like a rock. Um, 
it appears to be looking at the trail. Uh, apes are, are naturally very inquisitive. It may not have felt threat from this pair. And so its curiosity won over its fear. And uh, it was simply investigating. Is what we're seeing actually the mysterious Yeti? There is no way to tell, but nothing can be ruled out. Assessing it purely on face value of what we see, yes, I think this is extremely compelling evidence in favor of the existence of the Yeti or something akin to that. Maybe the Yeti doesn't exist, but there may be a creature roaming around the Himalayas that sure looks a lot like it. This tape alone does not give the definitive answer, but it may bring us closer to discovering the truth and putting an end to one of the greatest mysteries of our time. Everything about this video just strikes me as very natural, very unorchestrated, and uh, just a very simple encounter uh, with a, uh, a very elusive, very shy creature. Next, the Onyx Report. We'll revisit the evidence and answer the questions about monsters. Do these creatures really exist? What are all these people describing? How credible is their proof? Are these beasts deliberately avoiding human contact? And are there species we have yet to discover? We'll sum it all up in our Onyx Report on Unexplained Mysteries. Hear extraordinary stories of people saved by angels. A mysterious hand pulls a man out of a burning plane. It was translucent whitish goldish. And what really saved an entire school from a suicide bomber? She told me, Mom, the angels saved us. On the next Unexplained Mysteries, the signs are everywhere. are the stuff of myths, fables, and legends. But growing testimony and hard evidence is proving they do exist. They are stalking the planet. I started as a disbeliever. I went right on past being a believer into a knower. They have different habitats and different names. Eyewitness descriptions of them are shockingly similar. We were able to see a physical form of very black color, very dark. I mean, it was huge, black and shiny. It was colossal great hum. It looked black against the water. What I saw was a, about a six and a half, seven foot creature. A large, large humanoid creature walking like a human being. I can tell that it's a primate. It's a large primate. There are stories of menacing upright creatures that have existed in native lore for centuries. If we run across him, not to look into his eyes because he can steal your spirit. In the Pacific Northwest, there is evidence of a seven-foot walking monster. Broken branches here, pushed down branches there. Something has obviously come through here. I'm crying at this moment, so excuse my voice. It's right here. You can see it. I froze and I got my knees start shaking and that was Bigfoot. A docile Yeti is captured on video, wandering at high elevations. And ominous lake monsters are startling witnesses above and below the equator. My friend shouted because uh, an animal appeared. I felt a little afraid. I started screaming in fear. I found myself climbing on the canvas top of my boat. But no sea creature is more puzzling than the eerie figure known as the Loch Ness Monster. That's thick, <laughs> that's moving, that's alive. All I can say is that I saw a very large creature, living creature, for sure. Basically, I was shocked, rigid, totally shocked. But are these creatures real or just an elaborate deception executed by con men? The Loch Ness Monster lives in people's minds, 
and cannot be dislodged from there. There is no possibility that could be a man in a fursuit. There is no way uh, that this could ever be falsified because of the movement of the muscle underneath the hair. This is a real being, a real creature with spiritual powers that lives in wild places. The truth about these frightening creatures is as elusive as the monsters themselves. That is why, for now, they must remain and we'll talk about them. Modern Western culture jokes at Bigfoot, but in the Indian culture, Bigfoot is serious. This is a real being, a real creature with spiritual powers that lives in wild places. It's a guardian of sacred places, and it's not a joke at all. I went duck hunting in the evening about 6.15, 6.30, and um, I looked up, and this thing got out of the ditch, and I froze, and I got my knees started shaking, and that was Bigfoot. After that, I I sold my guns, and I never did go out again, you know? It was at this time that the former police chief received a flood of Bigfoot calls. I answered so many calls on him that people were making fun, saying it was... ...remote areas and avoids contact with the outside world. For some, it is a tall tale passed through the generations. But to Native Americans, Bigfoot is no fantasy. All these people had seen him who had a, an accidental run-in with him all got affected the same. They went into shock. Members of the Lumi tribe believe Bigfoot is a real being. Encounters have been retold throughout their history. Our old people, like my grandmother, tell us stories about Siatko, Samaquist. You people call him Sasquatch. They tell us if we run across him, not to look into his eyes because he can steal your spirit. These are the legends of the old people. It's a very high-pitched, squealing, blood-curdling, make your hair stand on edge scream. Police headquarters was able to record what is said to be the call of a Sasquatch. <laughs> Who or what is responsible for this intense shriek? The evidence was taken to a mammal expert to be analyzed. I've heard it and it's like nothing I've ever heard before. It's a noise, but whether or not an actual creature made that noise, that's, I can't determine that. It doesn't sound like anything that I am familiar with, and I certainly am familiar with almost all the mammals that are in North America. From the murky waters of Loch Ness to the uninhabited forests of the Pacific Northwest, sightings of unknown creatures have been widely reported. Accounts of animals like the giant squid have dominated recent news. And reputable names like Jane Goodall are recognizing the possibility of new primate species we have yet to discover. As the evidence mounts and the experts come forward, it's difficult to dismiss these stories as fictitious rumors. Yeti, Sasquatch, Bigfoot, it's known by many names, but the stories of its existence are strikingly similar. A giant, human-like creature that lives in... ...and things that were smoking dope that were drinking or something. There was no such thing. And the more they taunted about it, the more I wanted to prove there was such a thing without killing him. I did not want to kill this animal. I wanted to prove that he existed. One night, he came face to face with the monster. Would he finally get his proof? I received a, a prowler call at Emma Smith's residence on Scott Road. I was going north on Chief Martin Road, which is just off of the Scott Road. I could hear this screaming. I could see this thing running right toward my car. As it came into my bright light, I could see it was a Sasquatch. He had his mouth wide open, showing me all of his teeth. He was coming at me in an aggressive manner. At this point, his police radio picked up a loud, piercing noise. 